For those of you that are new to the channel, my name's Teacher T. I'm an English teacher here in Chiang Rai, in the north of Thailand. And because I live in a rural area, I have a love for motorbikes. And today we're going to specifically talk about the Royal Enfield Meteor 650 and how I successfully managed to fit an OEM USB handlebar charger from the Royal Enfield Meteor 350 to the 650. Even though my local dealer said it couldn't be done, it wasn't possible, I managed to do it. And it's a plug and play. It's easy. You can do it in less than 10 minutes. So watch this video and I'll show you how to do it. I think it's safe to say Teacher T is quite excited about this today. Fingers crossed. So what we're really hoping for is that I can plug this into the headlight and then I don't have to wire to the battery. I'm hoping that it all works from the headlight. So the first thing we're going to do is take the headlight to pieces. So two simple screws either side of the headlight to actually get the headlight off. This screw at the bottom is your adjusting screw for making the beam higher or lower. One. Well, that was fairly easy, right? And it pops off. There we go. Just press there. Expecting it to look this tidy, to be honest with you. Only one cable, but I think there's a lot of cables hidden behind here. So it's a small Allen key. We're going to undo this plastic shield. Ah, that's what I was expecting to see. Spaghetti Junction, Spaghetti Junction right here. That's what I want to see. And I'm hoping one of these adapters will fit the USB port. Part number RAC 00053 D. USB charger made in India. Let's open it up and see what adapter we have. There we go. That's the USB with its cover. All right, just there. Very nice. Plug and play. I do hope, I do hope this is plug and play. Right, there is a blank. There is a blank one. Very thin and red. Is it going to fit? Oh, the connections look right. Oh, right. Was that it? Was it as simple as that? Let's do hope so. We've plugged in to the red one, red and yellow. It was a blank one. It wasn't being used for anything. Here is my USB connected to my phone. Let's see if it powers up. <laughs> yes, yes it did. Well, Royal Enfield, my local dealer, it worked. All I've got to do now is fit it to the handlebar. That's the next problem. So here we are, I wanted to get this job done. But it's just started chucking down the rain. It's the first rain that we've had in about three months. So it's quite welcome, but it does interrupt my video. So we're going to fit the USB right here. There's this little bit under the clutch handle that comes down that fits the lower part of the USB. And the second part of the USB fits on 
the second screw of the clutch switch. So you just remove that one screw, put it back in. The only thing that it doesn't come with is another screw for here, but it's the same screw. I've taken this screw out and it does fit in here. I need to get another one. It doesn't come with the kit, unfortunately. I'm just gonna have to keep looking through my boxes of screws until I find one. Luckily, I found an electrical screw on the left. So I'm gonna follow this line down into the headlight. So I'm gonna route this cable, the same line as this cable into the back of the headlight. So we'll do that now and then thread it through. So I'm just gonna drop it down and put it into the back of the headlight. It's quite a big hole at the back actually, so it's not a, it's not a problem. There we go. I've got it through. I've got it through into the headlight and all it has to do is connect to our spare spare one here which has got a waterproof cover on it so they definitely intended that to be a 12 volt supply and waterproofed it clip them together and there we go and our new usb is going to fit just like that and some cables long enough to clip in here yeah it's all good it's all good Okay, fitting time, fitting time. It's got to go opposite way to what you think, so the cable has to go backwards. So let's put the uh, original screw back in the clutch switch. That's that done, and then I'll put my second new screw into that part that hangs down from the clutch handle. Oh, perfect, perfect. It's done, look at that, it's absolutely done. And now, I just need to attach the cable here. And I've got a hidden, a hidden USB port. All fitted nicely and tidily and secure. And then I used the original rubber ties to secure the cable. So this does take a bit of playing with getting this housing back in. What's very surprising is the headlight's plastic. I never knew that. So it's quite flexible. Um, I'm getting this plastic housing back in without bending the headlight. It's a little bit difficult, but I've rearranged the wires. It's all good. And now we just have to do up the hex screw again. Yeah, it's done. And I do love the way they've done that. It's so neat and so tidy. So now just replace the headlight. So it's a very good headlight from Royal Enfield, this one. I really do love this headlight. And it's just a case of, again, plug and play. That's it, we're connected. Two screws, that's all it is. It's even held itself there without the screws. Lovely. So the only problem I foresee is the midway transformer. So I've ran the cable all the way down so the cable enters the bottom, spun the transformer around so the water will drip off the bottom and not enter it through the top. So there we have it, job done. How much did it cost? Well, I paid 700 baht for this part in Thailand and I think that will equate to 15 pounds in England. And uh, yeah, for me it's perfect. Not that I wanted to mount my phone on the handlebars, I want to mount a camera on the handlebars. And not only that, I found an old camera that I've had in my drawer for the last 10 years not being used, a very old copy of a GoPro. It's an SJ Cam 4000, and it's got a, uh, a dash cam setting, so you can set it to car mode, and now I've got a, a dash cam fitted to the motorbike. So that will get me by for the meantime. 
one day, hopefully, I can afford a, a GoPro because really what I want to be doing is filming as well as having a dash cam at the same time. So anyway, I'm delighted with this mod, um, my SJ Cam 4000. It's only 1080p, but it's still good enough to uh, actually read number plates. So uh, Bob from Bali, if you're watching, maybe this is a solution for you because the USB mod is very cheap and an SJ Cam 4000 is very cheap. And now they make a new model in 4K, which is still cheap. So I think that's a good mod for having a dash cam stroke camera on your bike. I'm still happy to charge my phone from the side panel to the side pocket because I do like to use the tripper still. Um, I managed to navigate to Bangkok and back 1,850 kilometers with the tripper. So uh, yeah, it's all good. It's all good. The SJ cam is set to come on automatically with the ignition connected to the USB. It's a video recorder and a dash cam all in one. Teacher T is very happy. If you like this video, if it's helped you out, you can press the thanks button and you can buy me a coffee for $1.99, something like that. Uh, that would really help me out, help the channel out, and then I can make more videos like this in the future. So thanks very much for watching. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video, which is going to be um, my review of the Kawasaki 650S Vulcan, which was a bike that I, I really, really, really liked, and maybe I shouldn't have ridden. Hmm. Anyway, you'll see that on the next video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, ride safe. Mm -hmm.